Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 28. So this time we're going to look at creating a circular minimap down here in the left corner and we'll also look at creating a bit more environment with some buildings for a game to actually play around in because from next episode we're going to look at more graphics. So first thing I want to do is actually turn on the canvas here and I want to disable the cutscene that we've created just so as when we're testing I don't have to keep watching the cutscene over and over. So I've just turned off cut cam one and cutscene object. What we'll also do is move our first person controller out into the wilderness or wasteland or whatever we want to call this. So the idea of a minimap is to create a camera which renders a top down view of whatever our, or wherever our player is. So let's do that. Right click and we need to go to camera right there. Drag it up as high as you would want and rotate by 90 degrees on the X, just as it faces down and perfectly aligns with our character, making sure that the X and Z position are zero and zero. So as I say, you can have it as high or as low as you want. I'm gonna have mine about there. Right click and rename mini cam. So we need a texture for this to render to. So game object, UI, raw image. Double click so we can get it center of our screen and let's position it in the left. So anchor left and let's move it using this tool here to about there. And I think I'm going to increase it to one. Let's have it 200 by 200. Let's move it to about there. So as I said, it renders onto this image. But to do that, we need to create something called a render texture. So in our textures folder, let's right click create and we need to go here render texture let's call it mini map text next thing we need to do is on the mini cam we've just created there is an option in the inspector panel called target texture drag and drop that mini map texture into there so what's happening here is whatever the camera sees in this case us because it's pointing down looking at us it renders onto this texture and then obviously this texture is then displayed on this raw image. So we drag and drop onto there and we should be able to see real time this in game. So let's press play. Perfect. So let's right click and rename, call it mini map render. So that's all good and well. How do we make it circular? So right click, let's go to UI and let's change this type. Instead of raw image, we need to be image because we're going to use a sprite this time so once you have that done let's make it um in fact let's uncouple it from the minimap render let's make it 205 by 205 so it gives us uh, a border so if you wanted to have a square minimap at this point that's how you would do it so to make it circular what we need to do is bring in an image this circle map you can get on the website for free, downloads and assets, you'll be able to get it there. And all this is, is just a circle We're in a PNG file type. So the outside around it is kind of deleted, it's uh, transparent. So we need to change the texture type to Sprite and click Apply. Next thing we need to do is drag and drop on the image to source image there. So Sprite onto there. And you hopefully you can already see behind what's going on. You should be able to see the lines kind of poking out just a little. And I'm going to uh, right click, rename and call this mini map. Then I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to F2 and name this mini map mask. So we need to add a mask to this specific object. And to do that, we go to add component and type in mask and we can add a mask right there then final thing we need to do is drag and drop minimap render onto minimap mask like so and we should hopefully be able to see at this point although the outline to that is not as great as i would like so let's expand this to to 10 by 2 10. so you can see it's already taking its shape there quite nicely so what I think I might need to do with this is, in fact, that might do. It's little outlines there, but don't worry too much about them. We can kind of 
work around them by playing around with imagery. So if we undo that map render from there and take this actual render, stretch it just that little bit more. So we'll make it 210 by 210 and then redrag back onto the map mask. And you can see it's perfectly rounded. So let's change the minimap color. I don't really want it orange. I'm going to have it as black, I think. And then once that's done, drag and drop the minimap mask onto the minimap and that's our whole object done. So when we press play, we can see there's our minimap, nice and circular. So there's different ways of doing a minimap, especially with a border. You can always play around and create a better looking board if you want to. I'll just do mine quite simple for now. Uh, one extra little thing we might do is add an arrow to the center of our min minimap to see which way we're going. So I'm going to drag and drop this arrow into Unity and on minimap, right click, and let's have UI and let's try a raw image firstly. Let's see if this works and just drag and drop that arrow texture onto there. And obviously we need to shrink this a little bit. So 25 by 25. And press play. And there we go. There's the arrow pointing which way we're going. So next episode, I might actually, because at the moment the camera is rotating as we rotate, do you guys want like the minimap to freeze and only the arrow rotate? If you do, let me know in the comments and we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to save my project there. There's our minimap. Perfect. I'm quite happy with that. So as I said, we're going to create some um, buildings to kind of look around in. Now, we've briefly explored the asset store before. And there's some good things on there. So hold control, press nine, and let's get to the asset store. And there are kind of, well, there's a massive amount of assets that you can find on the asset store, some paid, some free. So I'm going to look for some abandoned buildings. And if we type in abandoned buildings and tick free only, we'll be able to find some free stuff quite easily. So I quite happily looked at these before. So these are the ones I'm going to use for now. So feel free to uh, import or download or whatever yours says. If you want to use different ones, please do. Obviously, all credit goes to this creator. I did not make these. I have had no hand in making these. And on top of it, I haven't received anything to actually use these assets in this tutorial. It's just something off my back because I feel these are pretty decent for what we're trying to create here. So once we uh, have imported or downloaded, I'm going to right click and close the asset store. Uh, I've already got these way ahead of time to kind of save a little bit of time. And into prefab, and you can see we have a couple of uh, prefabs. Let's bring in the abandoned house. And looks like it's a little bit small. So let's increase the size. Let's have it three by three by three. Move it down here. And let's press play and just have a quick look. So you'll notice with this particular house, the one I've used, that all the um, kind of outline of it is green. That's good. That basically means that all the colliders are in place. So it seems a little bit too big. So two by two by two. Now at the moment it doesn't look fantastic, does it? Admittedly, it looks a bit plain and bland. This is where the power of unity comes in when we start using lighting. Okay, so that looks a bit of a better size. So I'm going to bring in the other one to about there. Let's change the size of this to two by two by two. So feel free to explore different things. You can use many, many assets in this. It's up to you what you want to use. But for now, let's get these looking at least slightly better. So let's go to window, lighting, and settings. Now, if I remember rightly, a long time ago, we removed the skybox material. Let's add that back in for now. So click the little radius button. And for now, let's stick with default skybox. And let's change the source to skybox. And if we decrease the intensity multiplier, you can see that it's starting to have an effect on the world around us. If we choose color, change it to black or white or whatever you would want. And you can see that it is slowly starting to have an effect. Now, if we go to our hierarchy and type in light, we can find our directional light. Now, this is what has quite a bit of impact with whatever we're doing. If we were to perhaps turn it off, 
you can see things pretty much go black. But then if we go back to window, go back to lighting and settings, change it back to skybox, we can see that things start to take a different turn. So we can change just how much we want to see here. And at the same time, if we go onto these particular buildings and into textures, you can see there are some normal maps and it's up to you how you want to deal with these normal maps because the whole combination of textures and lighting re is what really makes the game. So if we have a look at this particular one, the ruined house, and go on here, we can see this is the one it's using, ruined house. So let's use this normal map. So let's change it to grayscale and click on apply. Give it a moment and we should be able to see that it kind of is, well, it is a little bit more detailed now. So let's go to window, lighting, settings, and we can always change to see how it looks. If we change it to color, again, it's a case of working like that to get the lighting just right. So I'm going to stick to skybox increase that just a little bit and I'm going to bring in uh, I'm going to bring in a point light just to see how this reacts so let's go to light and point light I'm going to bring it to a little bit closer to the house the ruined house and I'm going to increase the range and the intensity just slightly so I'm going to press play We'll have a quick look at this ruined house. So you can see the quality now because the combination of light and the normal maps on this particular house does look vastly different to this one here. So if we apply the same principle to this house here, which will be this normal map, create from grayscale and apply, we should be able to see it does make a difference at the moment, but it won't make a difference until we use the light itself. So the light now gives a bit more detail. So let's go back to our directional light, which was somewhere. Where's our directional light gone? Right there. If we turn it back on, but change the color to a darker color, you can see things starting to look kind of cool again because it's lighter but the effects of the um, actual kind of textures do look better although they look a bit a little bit mad so what I might do is reduce the amount of bumpiness to maybe 0 0.15 and click on apply doesn't make too much of a difference so let's try 0 0.05 and I click on apply okay so that does look a little bit better. Maybe just need to go a bit higher. So 0 0.1 and apply. So I think I'm quite happy with how that looks. Now, one thing I would like to do at this point as well is these steps here. If you're using the same model as what I've used, you may have noticed that you get stuck on these steps. All that requires is a quick little game object within this house, which allows us to walk up them steps. And to do that, if we, uh, in fact, let's just game object, let's go to 3D object and cube, and we can use this cube as like an invisible ramp. So just rotate on the X, stretch on the X as well, on the size, stretch on the Z to top right there. Just need to align it into place. If need be, rotate some more. and then turn off Mesh Renderer. And then let's couple that cube into the abandoned house there. So now we should hopefully be able to walk up them steps. So generally when it comes to anything like steps in a game, it's just a case of adding a, like an invisible ramp to get up. Well, there we go, perfect. Okay, so everything's kind of coming together now. We're starting to have a world that we're playing around in which I quite like. The minimap looks all right. So in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to look at perhaps maybe a swinging door for here so we can open a swinging door outwards to get in. Um, we're going to look at a skybox because we're going to start making the graphics look a little better than what they currently are. 
and we'll probably also look at some water so maybe like a little lake over here or something like that so until that next episode guys you work on your mini map you find some cool buildings that you want to work with if you want to use these ones like i say they're on the asset store free and i will see you in the next episode thank you very much for watching